If you have been watching the news at this point, you know that the market is collapsing. But you know what's the weirdest thing out there is that? Because around 10 days from now, we have a press conference by the Fed where the Fed is expected to lower the interest rates. And when we lower interest rates, the stock market is going to pretty much grow at this point. So when we're expecting the interest rates to actually be dropped why on earth stocks are collapsing at this point? I mean, if you take a look at the market, you will realize that Dow is down at this point. Google is down. Tesla is down. Amazon is down. The S&P 500, which represents the US economy, is actually down at this point. What do we have next? I mean, everything from NASDAQ to the entire stock market, everything is collapsing. So that led me to answer, to ask myself this, this simple question. This question might have been asked by you as well, a lot of you. So let's to try to figure out what exactly is happening to the market, what exactly causing the market to collapse and basically go down at this point. The main thing that affected the market at this point is the report that came out recently, and that is the jobs report. So we're expecting that the United States would add an additional 160,000 jobs in August. But what happened in reality is that we got 140,000 jobs at this point. And a lot of people might say, so what's the big deal? I mean, we are shy of 20,000 jobs in a single month. Is that really a big deal? I mean, 20,000 jobs shouldn't have such a big impact over the entire economy. Why would so many stocks actually collapse at this point where we couldn't just add an additional 20,000? We might add them in September, maybe October, maybe next month. It's not really a big deal. But if you actually want to understand what's happening and why this report is extremely important at this point, you got to zoom out at this point and take a look at everything from macro level. You see, everything that happens to the economy has a huge impact. While you might actually not care, for you, maybe three, four years ago was a really long time. For the economy, three, four years ago is not really a long time. And the economy of the United States still been heavily impacted by what happened in 2020 and 2021. So all those events, based on the cycle of the economy, are not really that far away. The consequences of what is happening to the economy today are because of the things that happened three, four years ago. So if you kind of zoom out, understand the economy starting from 2022 and 2023, it started getting out of that pandemic mode where jobs were being added back to the economy, where the restrictions were lifted and people went actually back to jobs. And people were expecting, wait a second, the US economy is recovering. And the government came in and said that, yes, of course, Yes, we had a setback out there, but we are going to grow now. We are going to add so many jobs. We are going, the GDP is going to explode. But let's take a look at what actually happened during that period. So starting from March 2023 to March 2024, which is a 12 month cycle, the government promised us that based on its expectations and its whatever numbers they actually run into, they were expecting almost 3 million jobs to be added at that point. And that kind of expectation gave a lot of hope to the investors that the economy is recovering, we are getting back, and the US economy is booming yet again. But what happened in reality? Exactly. It wasn't just shy of 100,000 jobs at this point. It was literally shy of almost a million jobs, because in reality, we only added 22.1 million jobs. So ask yourself a very simple question. The government has promised that we're about to add 3 million jobs at this point, when in reality, we're just adding 2.1 million jobs. That's almost a $900,000, a 900,000, I guess I'm talking about the dollars at this point, but that's a 900,000 jobs out there in a single year. That is a pretty big expectation. And now at this point, ask yourself a very simple question. Should investors trust the government that has been actually lying to them all this time? Of course, the government wants people to have a very positive outlook on the economy. Because if investors have a very positive outlook on the economy, they're going to invest. If you think that, you, that the economy is going to grow, you are going to spend your savings. And that will have a self-fulfilling prophecy on the economy and the economy is going to recover and is going to grow. And that's why investors are right now 
we have been trusting the government, we have been trusting these numbers that they actually been giving us, but look what happened. The economy is not catching up. Jobs are not being added. And you have to understand that the job indication is a very powerful indication of where the economy is going to be. Because if you're going to understand that, the, job, the jobs are going to tell us a lot whether the economy is on the brink of following into a recession at this point. Why? See, the way that the stock market grows is that we have real companies and these companies produce products and services. And guess to whom they are selling those products and services? Exactly. They're selling them to people like you, to people like me, to people like everyone else around. So if we don't buy their products and services, they will make less profit. And when they make less profit, their valuations in the market are going to drop. And vice versa, of course. If we are going to spend more money, if we're going to buy their products more, much more often, their quarterly reports or financial statements are going to look way better. And investors, wait, wait a second, this company is worth a lot more and they will start investing in those companies, buying their shares and their valuations in the market is going to grow. And now ask yourself a very simple question. Do the people who don't have jobs, can they actually spend money? Well, absolutely not. You are not going to spend your savings when you don't have a job. I mean, if you don't have a job, you don't have money to spend in the first place. And that's why the number of the jobs, the situation in the market, the job market is extremely important. And we're, we are not adding that many jobs every single month as we actually were expecting. Then that means that the economy might be on the verge of actually hitting into a recession. And a lot of people at this point are afraid that, yes, the Fed wants to lower the rates in September, let's say, but how much it is going to lower it? 25 basis? 50 basis? Well, that's not enough at this point when the job report is so catastrophically bad, when we are not adding enough jobs. So just lowering the rates by like 0.25 base at this point might not actually make any kind of a real difference at this point to actually save the economy. And we might be on the brink of a real recession that is about to happen like probably next year. But the Fed on the other side, I mean, according to a lot of estimates and whatever we see is happening with the economy, is not ready to lower the rates by more than probably 50 basis this year. Why? Because inflation, yes, we have defeated inflation to a certain extent. We have brought it down to less than 3%. But 2.9% is really still high. And if we don't bring it to 2% at this point, everything we have done over the last two years to tackle inflation might be absolutely worthless because we are yet again are going to go back to the exact same inflationary period. And you have to understand that the United States is not in a position to solve another recession in front of it by just printing money like it, it has always done. I've covered in detail why that is not an option in one of the previous videos. But in short, the United States is going to use and borrow a lot of money to save the economy from the next recession that might actually happen in 2025 or 2026. Whatever it might actually happen in the foreseeable future, it is going to cause massive inflation. We haven't yet got out, out of the first inflation. What do you think is going to happen? A double digit inflation is waiting for us. So as an investor, you're very, very skeptical. The government has been feeding you for the last year or so with very wrong information about the state of the economy. And we might actually fall into a recession and you're sitting on a lot of money. Now, you might not actually care much because you have like five, ten thousand dollars in your bank account and you might have like ten, twenty thousand dollars in your investing portfolio. But somebody out there with hundreds of billions of dollars or maybe trillions of dollars really cares because he cannot sit out there and risk so much money just because, you know, he trusts the government. That is not an option for them. And what you have to understand about the financial markets is that the way that financial markets work is very differently from a lot of people actually expect. So a lot of people think that, well, if the markets are doing good, then the markets, then investors are going to invest. And that's how the economy and the markets are going to grow and vice versa. But that's not how everything works at this point. You see, the market at this point might actually be growing. The market might actually be growing. And the jobs report that we actually had for August might not have any kind of real negative impact on the economy. Because if you take a look at the historical perspective on the stock market and the economy overall, all these setbacks that we had very small compared to what has actually been happening. Over time, we defeated those problems and the market has been growing all those years. 
So from the historical context, this problem, this setback is not really a big deal. What is important here is that what investors think is going to happen to the market. That is the single most important factor that is going to define where the market is going to be in the foreseeable future. And that is why if investors think that we are going down, then we are going down at this point because investors' expectation is the number one factor here. Now, let me give you a very simple example. If you're an investor and you think that there is going to be a real recession, a real crisis that is coming, what are you going to do? Now, we don't care what is happening to the market today. You don't care what is happening yesterday, what has been happening yesterday or the last year. What you want is not what is happening to the market, what is going to happen to the market in the foreseeable future. And I don't care who you are. You can be Warren Buffett. You can be sitting in the Oval Office. Nobody in this world knows the future. Yes, we can use tools and systems and strategies to analyze and make some accurate expectations. And some people are more accurate, other people are less accurate. And based on that, we are going to make our financial decisions. But at the end of the day, we can't really know for a fact. Future is very unseen by everybody. So if you as an investor believe that the market is going to get into a recession, what are you going to do? you are going to sell your stocks today because you don't want to experience that recession. And when you sell your stocks at this point, what is going to happen? What is going to happen to the prices? Exactly. The market is going to tank. So just because you had a negative expectation at this point, the market has went down. And now ask yourself an absolutely opposite question. What would happen if you thought that the markets are going to rise? What are you going to do at this point? Let me tell you, like, let's say, for example, you're sitting out there and you have straight facts in front of you that the market is going to grow at this point. What are you going to do? No, you are going to invest your money because you believe that the markets are going to rise. And when you believe, you are going to put your money out there. And when you invest, what happens? Demand rises and prices in the market rises. So to a certain extent, the stock market is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we believe that the markets are going to grow, then we invest. And if we believe it's going to crash, we don't invest and the market is going to go down. And that's why it's extremely, like extremely, I cannot emphasize enough on this point that the government's job, like the job of the government is to make sure that you have a very, very positive outlook on the economy. And that's why they can literally manipulate the numbers. They can literally get out there and lie about the economy so that you have a very positive outlook on the economy. And that's why if you have been watching, for example, the chairman of the Fed on every single press conference, even though that he has the bad, the bad data, he would get out there and he would lie about the economy. And why? Because he wants people to have positive outlook on the economy. That's not because he's bad or he's like, maybe he's a liar. I don't know if you can call it like that, but that's not the point. The point is that that is the job of the Fed and that is the job of the market, and that is the job of the government. And that takes me to the next point. There is something called feedback loop, because the feedback loop, what does the feedback loop does at this point is that, let's say you have negative expectations on the economy. What happens is that, this is going to lead you to take, to take action. And what action do you take when you have negative expectation on the economy? Exactly, you sell your stock at this point. So what do you think happens to the market when you sell your stocks? When you sell a stock, the supply rises, demand goes down. And in that kind of circumstances, what happens to the price? It goes down. And when the price actually goes down at this point, what happens? Imagine prices went down. It sends a signal to other investors that markets are, going, are doing bad. So their expectations of the market is going to drop as well. So there is going to be more negative expectation about the market. And it's going to lead those investors to take action, which means that they will sell their stocks and that will lead to prices to fall again. So it turns into this never ending cycle, like a feedback loop where one action is going to lead to another and just destroy the markets. And that's one of the main reasons why the market is actually collapsing. That's one of the main reasons why often it's not really a big deal and not really a big catastrophe. And yet the market reacts so strongly to that thing. However, 
If you actually position yourself correctly, if you actually plan your investments correctly, you can position yourself in such a point that you are going to take advantage out of it. Because real professional investors make money whether the market grows or the market falls down. And that's exactly what you should be doing. Take care.